To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. Yet another major IPO that's all set uh, to open. I have with me the management of Star Health Insurance. We've got uh, Dr. Prakash, Managing Director, and Mr. Anand Roy, the Managing Director, with us uh, to discuss Star Health and Allied Insurance and its prospects going forward. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, gentlemen. A big day for you in the run-up. Uh, and given the kind of subscription we've normally been seeing of late uh, to recent uh, listings, uh, what is the kind of response you've already seen and are anticipating uh, from this issue? See, there is a lot of fundamental analysis that has been done on our performance uh, and uh, a, a deep dive into the track records that we have achieved. And uh, various investors are in discussion with us. And um, a comparison and benchmarking is being done with uh, the listed peers in the market. So based on all these things, we see that there is a lot of you know, good response flowing in uh, on the anchor side and QIB side. So uh, we are eagerly looking forward to the opening of this IPO. What are the kind of opportunities that you see for the sector? We all know that insurance has been much touted. You have some very big promoter names, for instance, Rakesh Junjunwala. But what's the kind of opportunity that you're seeing? Yeah, so as you rightly said, uh, insurance is a hot space. And in insurance, health insurance is the hottest uh, subject right now because of the uh, pandemic and the awareness it has created in the general public about having a financial protection for themselves and their family. At Star Health, we are very well poised to, you know, capture this uh, uh, opportunity that we believe, you know, will be uh, beneficial to uh, dominant players like us because we are able to reach to maximum customers and offer them our services. And the company, as you uh, rightly said, you know, promoted by uh, uh, Rakesh Ji and led by our chairman, Mr. Jagannathan, who actually uh, retired as a public sector insurance company chairman and started this company way back in 2006. He had this vision that, you know, a standalone health insurance company should be floated to offer better quality products and services to the Indian public. And I think we have kind of uh, well into that journey. Uh, we have not achieved anything at all, but we believe that, you know, there is a lot of opportunity for us to uh, grow from here. What are you planning to use the funds for the IPO proceeds? How are they going to be allocated? See, the proceeds like, you know, the offer for sale is around 5,500 and uh, uh, our primary fresh issue is uh, close to 2,000 crore. And uh, this 2,000 crore will be utilized for our, like, you know, uh, uh, company's investment and solvency purposes. Um, <clears throat> overall, we see that <clears throat> that, is, uh, that is going to be a, a greater responses in the year to come because you know the one time impact of the pandemic and uh, one time impact of the accounting pattern and reinsurance uh, arrangements that we have have uh, probably created a loss for last year and h1 of this year but going forward with this infusion and with the internal accretion that we are uh, envisaging we should be uh, comfortable on our solvency what will be the major growth drivers uh, for you going forward? Uh, are there specific segments that you'll be looking at? Uh, uh, where do you feel you know, you, you're going to see maximum traction going ahead? See, the major drivers of growth will remain the same. Nothing is going to change uh, after IPO. But we believe that uh, the agency network, which we have built over the years, we have more than five lakh agents who are working for us. And uh, we believe this network will be our main uh, growth contributor. But having said that, uh, we are also looking at some new channels and verticals. For example, uh, we have opened up a new vertical to cater to the rural markets. We have seen a lot of demand coming from the semi-urban and the rural areas. Uh, we are also custom making products to segments of the society which were not taking insurance earlier. For example, the younger age group, which used to feel, you know, they do not need health insurance. But now after the pandemic and the awareness it has created, they are more interested in buying health insurance, but they are buying it. I mean, they are also looking at the digital channels. So we are investing a lot of money and technology on our digital uh, channels and uh, driving them. So a combination of all of these, will, uh, we believe, will be a good uh, area for us to keep our growth momentum high. To add to this, I can say that people are living longer these days and uh, there is more awareness on health and advancements in technology and in treatment and corporate growing corporate hospitals. 
uh, tertiary care hospitals and quaternary level hospitals. So all these things, you know, increasing healthcare cost and the modern amenities and treatment facilities that are available will definitely look at, you know, having a financial backup, uh, like, you know, for people. So naturally, there is going to be a more and more demand. And the uh, outer potential for market is also very high because hardly 10% of the people in India have some form of adequate health insurance cover. So naturally, you know, given the uh, life expectancy and growing per capita income and increasing awareness, we foresee a, uh, a, a good growth in this segment. What about challenges or regulatory challenges in the industry as it evolves, uh, uh, you know, high rates and so on? What are the, some of the issues uh, uh, that you're likely to face or already do uh, counter in this journey? So one of the challenges may be uh, like, you know, we design the policy, but hospitals and uh, doctors, they, they deliver the services. So we should have a proper connect between design and delivery. And we, there should be a proper alignment and we should work towards standardization of cost because our policyholders, they believe us, they, they, they rely on our brand and they take a health insurance policy with us. It is our duty to see that we not only pay them for their health healthcare expenses, but we also ascertain that we validate the need for any admission or surgery or uh, placement in ICU. And then we will have to verify and see that the right treatment and the appropriate treatment uh, is being given to all our customers. So naturally, like, you know, we, we, have, a, we, we have this uh, challenge in standardizing the procedures and cost, standardizing the billing pattern, introducing a lot of, you know, digital comfort for a patient, for a customer when they go for a claim, how they can submit their claims online, how they can go to the portal and register a claim, how they can use our chatbots. So all these things, you know, how we, we can help our customers to adapt to all the digital innovations and the automated uh, assisted uh, auto adjudication processes that we are planning to build in, in our system. So we are, our challenge will be to build in all these digital uh, transformation uh, journey in our servicing and in our sourcing of business and also in helping our customers to adapt and sustain on these uh, digital tracks so that we you know we continue to offer more and more better service to our customers. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Wishing you all the best and look forward to uh, interacting with you again very soon here on Business Today. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.